2013 is a legislative act in India which ensures that women are protected against sexual harassment at all the workplaces, be it public or private. It is a pleasure that today Mr. Moloi Sanyal has kindly consented to be the guest speaker of today's webinar. I welcome you, sir. On behalf of ICC, I also welcome Dr. Rama, our ever dynamic principal, our current IQAC director, Dr. Mona Bhatnagar, and all the participants once again. On the onset, a quick recap of the important aspects of a good webinar, which all of us shall follow. Except for the speaker, the participants will keep their devices on mute and videos on off mute. The questions and comments may please be posted in the chat box. Our team member, Dr. Arvind, shall be taking up the maximum possible questions within the constraints and time framework towards the end. Now, I request Dr. Mona Bhatnagar to touch upon the role of IQAC with respect to our today's topic of discussion. Dr. Mona Bhatnagar. Dr. Mona? Yeah. Just a moment. Uh, I would request uh, Dr. Sushma to please uh, escape from the present now mode. Okay, let's begin. Uh, thank you, Dr. Puti. Uh, a very good evening to our principal, Professor Rama, speaker of the day. Mr. Moloy Sanyal, coordinator of today's webinar, Dr. <laughs> Fellow colleagues, Dr. Arvind, uh, I'm, I, I don't know whether I'm, I'm having a lot of noise. All the questions to all are requested to mute their mics. Yeah, I think now it's okay. So shall I carry on? Yes, yes. yes. So uh, very good evening to our principal, Professor Rama, the speaker of the day, Mr. Moloy Sanyal, today's webinar coordinator, Dr. Preeti Dharmara, and his and her team, Dr. Arvind and uh, Dr. Neera Chopra, and their participants. An educational institute is an important pillar of the society as it helps shape the future of the society, that is, students. Hence, it is very essential that we create and operate in an environment which acts as a positive influencer on their behavior. Though the architects of our constitution laid down the foundation of a fair and just society with equal rights for both the genders, but we still find that it is flouted at many places. And the society even brushes aside these sexual harassment acts under the carpet as our society predominantly has a patriarchal mindset. However, now with the increase in the level of awareness, sexually harassed survivors have started gathering courage in exposing the perpetrators. This has been ably supported by the strong legal framework being put in place by the government. Social media, print and film media platforms have also helped fighting this menace. Me Too movement that happened last year was a manifestation of bringing this fight out in open from closets. 
film Pink was another example of a very strong portrayal of a character of the survivor. But we can't leave these awareness and education to media and films alone. Formal awareness about the gender equality rights and provisions of the Act is a must at all workplaces, including our college. It's in this context that IQAC, the Internal Quality Assurance Cell of the college, thought of organizing a webinar on role of ICC in prevention, prohibition, and redressal of sexual harassment of women at workplace and make our faculty aware of the various provisions in this act. This would also give them an opportunity to hear it directly from the experts in the field and have their questions answered. Not taking much time, I would request our principal, Professor Rama, to welcome our speaker and participants. Thank you so much. Over to Professor Rama. Thank you, Mona. Thank you very much. Mona, my voice is coming. Yes, yes. Namaskar. IQAC Director, Dr. Mona Bhatnagar. Webinar Convener, Dr. Preeti Dharmara. ICC Team, Dr. Neera Chopra, Dr. Arvin, Dr. Baljeet and this webinar will organize the whole team of IQAC and ICC team members, participants, for today, we have a very good day that we have a special topic on 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 a special topic our thinking is changing and every 24 hours in our hands we have a remote remote channel in our hands we have a remote channel in our hands we have a remote channel in our hands or not what is our future is our future is a lot of exposure and when we talk about the workplace in the workplace अलग-अलग thinking के लोग, अलग-अलग background के लोग, अलग-अलग mentality वाले लोग, यानी बहुत भिन्न-भिन्न काम करने वाले लोग, अलग-अलग तरह से एक साथ platform पर काम करने के लिए जब आते हैं, तो सबकी सोच, सबकी जो thinking है, वो एक दूसरे को प्रभावित करती है। लेकिन उसी बीच में कैसे दोनों gender आपस में एक दूसरे की respect करें, एक दूसरे को बिल्कुल फ्रीडम का भी एक पूरा स्पेस दें, एक दूसरे की थिंकिंग की पूरी रिस्पेक्ट करें, लेकिन साथ साथ हमारा जो बिहेवियर है, वो बिहेवियर भूलमिल के काम करते हुए भी कैसे बड़ा सेंसिबल होना चाहिए, एक दूसरे की रिस्पेक्ट करने वाला होना चाहिए, यहाँ पर बल्कि मैं कहना चाहूँगी कि हमारा तो हमारी सोसाइटी में पहले जो वेस्टर्न में प्रॉब्लम थी अब हमारी इंडियन सोसाइटी में भी मैं देख रही हूँ ये प्रॉब्लम बहुत जबरदस्त आने लगी है हर तरफ सेक्सुअल हरेसमेंट के केसेस हमें सुनने को मिलते हैं बड़ी हैरानी होती है जब हमारे अपने स्टूडेंट्स इस चीज को लेकर बहुत परेशान होते हैं और कई बार तो हम हेल्पलेस हो जाते हैं क्योंकि जो हम टीचर्स हैं हमारा काम है पढ़ना पढ़ाना स्टूडेंट्स को गाइड करना लेकिन जब नई नई प्रॉब्लम्स आती हैं तो मुझे लगता है कि इन प्रॉब्लम्स को फेस करते करते हम अपने बीच में समय समय पर एक्सपर्ट्स को बुलाते हैं और जब हम एक्सपर्ट की बात करते हैं तो आज हमारे लिए बहुत अच्छा है कि आज हमारे इस वेबिनार के जो हमारे स्पेशल रिसोर्स पर्सन हैं मिस्टर मुलाय सन्याल डिप्टी सेक्रेटरी डीओपीटी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ सेक्रेटरी ट्रेनिंग एंड मैनेजमेंट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया से मिस्टर सन्याल हंसराज कॉलेज के बिहाफ पर मैं आपका वेलकम करती हूँ, आपका हार्दिक अभिनंदन करती हूँ, आपका स्वागत करती हूँ। और मैं बताना चाहूँगी कि हमने ये कोई बहुत बड़े ग्रुप के लिए प्रोग्राम नहीं रखा था, छोटे ग्रुप के लिए रखा था कि मिस्टर सान्याल जब अपना लेक्चर खत्म करेंगे, आपके मन में जो हमारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स के मन म कि कैसे हम अपने वर्कप्लेस में एक दूसरे की रिस्पेक्ट करते हुए जो सेक्सुअल हरेसमेंट के केसेस डे बाय डे इंक्रीज हो रहे हैं अच्छा है अभी तो हम लॉकडाउन में हैं कम से कम ऐसे होते हैं 
बंद कर घर में बैठ कर चिंतन मनन कर सकते हैं सोच सकते हैं मिस्टर सान्याल से हमें गाइडेंस मिलेगी मिस्टर सान्याल मैं आपका दोबारा से आपका स्वागत करती हूँ आईसी आईसीसी दोनों को ही मैं उनको विशेष रूप से धन्यवाद देती हूँ और अपने सभी पार्टिसिपेंट्स का पार भी मैं स्वागत भी करती हूँ धन्यवाद भी करती हूँ कि लॉकडाउन के टाइम पर आपने इस विषय पर सोचने के लिए समय निकाला एक बार पुनः लॉकडाउन के टाइम पीरियड में कोरोना से जूझ रहे विश्व के बीच में मैं आप सबके स्वास्थ्य के एक अच्छी हेल्थ की आप सबके खुश रहने के जल्दी से जल्दी हम इस दौर से बाहर आए उसके लिए मैं आप सबको शुभकामनाएं देती हूं और अब डॉक्टर प्रीति हमें आज के स्पीकर से इंट्रोड्यूस करवाते हुए उनका लेक्चर शुरू करवाएंगी डॉक्टर प्रीति धर्मा थैंक यू डॉक्टर रमा वेरी वेल वेलकम टू मिस्टर using the whole thing and then professor rama who is the principal of this uh, prestigious college and uh, of course professor priti and uh, the other professors and faculty members i don't know the name of everybody i can see some of the names uh, i may not be able to address all of you individually uh, one assistant professor ashutosh is also helping me in Uh, connecting through uh, webinar, so my heartfelt thanks go to uh, 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 Professor Ashutosh as well. Well, um, how we are going to uh, proceed? Let me uh, verify that. Um, if I carry on with a normal kind of a lecture uh, or presentation, etc., then uh, it will be slightly boring for all of you. so i um have a plan to introduce topics one by one and i request all of you to please participate and the general protocol which has been spelled uh, out by uh, dr priti in the beginning uh, uh, that uh, uh, when somebody asks a question please uh, put your mic on and put the question and then put the mic off so that i can answer or we can have a general discussion but uh, during the time of discussion if uh, more than two three of us uh, have our mics uh, on then it will, it could be a kind of uh, cacophony so we will avoid we will try and avoid that uh, so uh, my first uh, introductory remark is that uh, this uh, internal complaints committee icc is formed because of the uh, act that is the uh, sexual harassment of women within bracket prohibition uh, protection and uh, redressal act of 2013 which uh, came into being came into effect 
from 22nd of April 2013. You all know that. And after that, uh, some time was given to all the departments and offices to uh, start uh, forming the internal competence committee. And that is why the internal competence committee is there. So the first uh, question which goes to all of you uh, is that are all of you here present, all of you are the member, are the members of the internal competence committee? Uh, no, we are not the members of the internal ICC because it is a mandatory body. So, uh, we are not the, uh, all of them are not the members, only uh, I think four or five people are the members. Okay, uh, that's great. I mean, uh, do you know that internal competence committee uh, has to be there? It has to be constituted as per Section 4 of the Act. And yeah, it is a statutory uh, committee that has to be there. That, you know, that, that is that, that understanding we have. Hello. 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 Hello everyone, I just got a call from Sanyal uh, that uh, electricity, uh, the, uh, there is power failure in his house and he is trying to connect to some other connection.
Yeah. Yeah, can you can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, uh, not a problem. Uh, sorry, uh, I was just asking, and uh, probably Dr. Priti has already clarified that uh, this uh, internal complaints committee must have a presiding officer, and uh, the presiding officer necessarily has to be a, a lady. So, uh, uh, another another question is. What is the minimum number of uh, uh, members in the presiding uh, in the internal complex committee? Are you sure about that? Yes. Uh, uh, what is the yeah? What is the minimum number of uh, members in 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 the internal complex committee? Are you uh, clear about that? Seven, minimum seven. No, not minimum seven. Uh, in the any in any other any other any other reply? Any other try? I think ten members. How many? Sorry, members. Come again. Ten members is not the right answer. Any any other try? Uh, yes, five. Yes, we have seven, so five, five. Minimum is five. Okay. Okay. Let me. Let me. How many, ma'am? Yes, Vandana, you are saying something. Four members. Four members. Four members is the right answer. But oh. uh, uh, how come? How come uh, there are four? Only four members. Uh, what are the description? Let me clarify that. Yeah, one one member must be from NGO and and three from the institute and two at least at least two from the organization. Preferably, here the word preferably has been used, right? Preferably, they have some kind of. Uh, knowledge about women issues or they are associated with uh, some uh, women related activities uh, or they may have legal background so there should be two members at least from the organization itself and the presiding officer herself so that makes at least four members but you will find that in most of the places the minimum number is five. The obvious reason is because four is a number, four is an even number, and if there is um, uh, uh, some kind of uh, disagreement, I mean, uh, uh, in that case, the group may be divided amongst uh, this four, I mean, two, two, and there will not be a decision. There is no kind of uh, veto system by the presiding officer. So there has to be a decision making uh, uh, simple uh, going by the majority logic and for that calculation uh, it is better to have minimum five members. Although the act or the law does not talk about five members but you will find in most of the cases five members are there and for similar reasons you will find the number of members are always odd it may be 5, it may be 7, it may be 9 and interestingly uh, there is no uh, minimum uh, prescription of uh, members in this committee. So there could be more members as well. But if you have more members then it will be administratively difficult to handle the meeting of the internal competence committee etc. That is why mostly you will find 5 members or 7 members uh, kind of uh, committees in most of the organizations. Please remember that uh, when we say as per this law, when we say about the organizations, the organizations are, uh, uh, it, it can be 
any type of organization, either government or non-government, uh, that means private uh, organization, any type of entity, whether registered, not registered, how it is registered, etc., is not at all the question. The question is that it has to be a workplace, but there is one concept of recognized and unrecognized sector. So unrecognized sector is that particular entity which is uh, having less than 10 number of people walking. So if 10 number of people are walking or more, you have to have, as per the law, you have to have one internal complaints committee uh, in your organization. Then another question comes, which is uh, uh, if all the members who are working in a particular organization is, uh, say, uh, male, right? All of them are male members. Then do you need to have an internal complaints committee? With yes. this question, I'm with this question, I'm leaving you from my phone. Let me try if I can connect it again from my laptop. It will be easier for me. Otherwise, uh, is my voice reaching you clearly? Yes, yes. Yes, this is Sanyal. Yeah, yeah, clear? Yes, yes. Okay, if, if I'm clear in this, then I can continue. But perhaps uh, going back to um, this thing will be better. I mean, uh, my laptop will be better, right? So I'm just switching over to my laptop, uh, try to answer this question. If and, and also there is another question attached to it, why? If all the members are uh, uh, male members, then why should we have an internal complaints committee in an organization? That is the question. Please start discussing on it. I'll be back in a short. Thank you. Uh, there, are, there still has to be a yes. committee, even if you have yes. all members who are male. Uh, you still have to have a committee, even if you have all the male members. Yes, Monica. Yes. Very right. Very right. But why? Yes, anyone? Men can also be harassed. They also may be feeling, uh, you know, cornered or maybe they are also facing a problem. Yes. That is not gender specific. A problem could be like it's a mental issue, I think. Right. Okay. Can can people list like uh, what kind of uh, like what can come under sexual harassment? Mm -hmm. What can be found under sexual harassment? Some mental harassment, physical harassment. Many things, man. Verbal. Yes. Yeah, my question was if uh, there is uh, all the members are all the members of an organization are uh, male members, do you need to have one internal complaints committee in that organization? The answer is yes. Yes, sir. And uh, yeah, why should we have yes, that? Sir. Sir, uh, can be men can also be men can be harassed. They can be aggrieved. Yes. They can be passed comments which can disturb them. There can be lots of other offenses by other members uh, in the staff uh, that may not sound very harsh to them. But even if a person is intimidated by any comment that is taken to be as sexual harassment uh, even if two people are talking and the comment is meant for the other person that can also be taken as a sexual harassment i mean you can be intimidated intimidated by various things yeah, yeah dr minakshi was it dr minakshi who was talking or dr monica Monica. Yeah, it was me, Monica. Yeah, uh, yeah, Doctor Monica. Uh, the thing is, uh, there are certain and Avaraj Singh ji also. You are uh, sending something. Let me just 
quickly uh, tell you that uh, Avaira Singh Ji uh, is saying, um, Dr. Monica, yes, and uh, Minakshi Malhotra Ji, uh, you are uh, saying that showing uh, inappropriate uh, material, lewd gestures constitute sexual harassment. That is right. Bullying, discrimination, then the issue of harassment can happen to men as well. No, issue of harassment can happen to men as well. There is no doubt about that. But this particular law which we have started discussing today, this does not cover those incidences. Okay. So please remember that these uh, particular piece of law or the area of law which we are discussing today is uh, concerning only uh, women. Because the name of the law is sexual harassment of women at workplace and uh, then of course uh, within bracket there are uh, prevention prohibition redressal all those things so there but this is necessarily for the women okay now it brings me to to another another very important question and that is um, if you are clear about it uh, or you are not, let me just pace up my discussion a bit because uh, time was lost in between. Uh, in, in the law, there are two very clear cut distinctions of the uh, uh, workplace concept, right? Because we are talking about uh, sexual harassment of women at workplace. So there are one term which is used that is aggrieved woman. So, aggrieved woman, this this is underst understood, no question about that. So, uh, none other than a woman can be aggrieved in it, uh, uh, in the in the purview of this particular law. But uh, when it comes to workplace, there are two clear cut distinctions. One is domestic place, and the other one is workplace. Uh, why it is so? Because it is said that domestic place is uh, somebody's workplace, all right. But domestic place is a different kind of entity where you cannot always say that there has to be, you know, 10 persons at least employed, etc. All those things are not applicable there. So, uh, it's, uh, it's different. Now, what is the difference? Let me also clarify. Uh, when it comes to workplace, uh, this place is particularly made for what? For example, Hansaraj College is a workplace. But Hansaraj College premises is not a, a domestic place, right? But where you stay, it may be inside the campus or it may be outside the campus, that particular place is uh, meant for uh, uh, domestic purpose, although most of us are now working from home, it does not become a workplace. So it has to be kept in mind very clearly. If you are not clear about anything, please ask me a question. And then comes a very vital uh, definition. A grieved woman, when it comes to workplace, she can be of any age and there is no restriction that she has to be employed there. Please listen to me very carefully. There is not even any restriction that she has to be at all uh, working anywhere. So that means that in your college, when a student comes to study or when a student's parents come for inquiry or for that matter, any, any woman come for any purpose whatsoever, whether they are working anywhere or not, or what is their age, these things do not matter for them to be aggrieved under uh, this particular act. Whereas, when it comes to the domestic place, there one condition is that she has to be employed in that particular domestic place, although age is no part. So, I often ask it in my class that, uh, suppose uh, in your office there is a casual worker who has brought her daughter along with her and this daughter uh, was misbehaved with uh, by somebody and uh, uh, this particular incident 
somebody wants to be covered it into the purview, uh, uh, within the purview of this uh, sexual harassment act is it possible the answer is yes whatever is the age of that little girl right and uh, somebody also asked me that uh, whether bosco comes here yes bosco comes here uh, uh, prevention of uh, uh, sexual offenses uh, etc against children but uh, then it is up to the aggrieved woman to choose whether she wants to lodge a complaint under this particular act provision or not and if a uh, uh, complaint is there then the internal complaints committee has to act upon it so please remember this uh, yeah any question sir i have one question can yeah. a male member complaint against a female member in icc uh this is dr ashutosh right hello am i audible yeah audible sir it's arvin yeah ashutosh ji yeah okay the uh, it's a it's a very good question i mean a uh, male member can lodge a complaint but not for himself a male member can lodge a complaint for somebody else for a lady she can be his friend or he can be a well wisher or anybody witness or anybody provided that he has a written consent of the, the that aggrieved woman on her behalf uh, a male member can lodge a complaint but otherwise a male member cannot i repeat cannot lodge a complaint for himself because this is for women there has to be an aggrieved woman there cannot be a aggrieved man Have I answered your question, sir? Yes, sir. It's clear. Yeah. Yeah. And sir, I still have a question. Yeah, please carry on. Yeah, you said that uh, if there is a company which is uh, having all male people yeah. who are working, then also it needs to have a ICC. That's right. Uh, does this mean that, say, I as a woman have some work and I have gone there? Yeah. And it is for my sake, basically, that the ICC is not is there exactly. and not for those workers. Exactly. Workers. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. Now you understand. Yes. Now you okay. understand that it is not necessary for you to be working there, even if you have come for something else, completely different reason, or for any no any reason at all. You have just been, uh, you know, roaming there, and somebody has uh, sexually harassed you uh, within that workplace. then that uh, icc will take care of that and please remember that it is said that uh, there has to be at least one half at least one half members of icc should be women but uh, when we are talking about uh, a completely uh, male membered entity uh, how come that uh, there are at least uh, uh, you know half one half uh, are uh, women including the presiding officer who has to be necessarily a woman then there are provisions that if you don't have any woman worker or if you don't have any woman less than sufficiently hard place then you also have the provision to uh, uh, take any uh, similarly placed uh, uh, woman officer from from some other similar type of organization or for that matter anywhere so there is one organization which doesn't have any woman they can hire people from other organization to be their internal complex members often it uh, uh, often in a uh, you know as a as a, as a question uh, somebody asked me that in that case in my office there is no internal complex committee i don't want to form any new internal complex committee i want to use the internal complex committee of my office which is next door another office which is next door otherwise we don't have any relationship with that office but can we can we do that the answer is no please remember ansaraj college uh, is having a particular compound and you have office at a particular place but if it is a, it is the case that ansaraj college is having two three branches or you may be having two three different offices in two three different places then you need to have uh, a 
internal compliance committee, separate internal compliance committee in those two, three separate places as well, provided that in each of uh, these places uh, there are at least 10 workers working. I can I can see some of the comments. Let me uh, go to it uh, quickly. Mm. So this can cover uh, patients going to a hospital or to a doctor. Would the act apply there? Yes, it will uh, apply there. Minakshi Malhotraji and. Uh, Then uh, any anything else? Any any more question? Okay. Uh, then I shall proceed. Shall I? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, there are there are two important terms which have which are used there, uh, one is respondent and the other one is uh, aggrieved woman. Uh, then my question is, uh, a respondent, who is the respondent? Can respondent be a woman? So it is the other type of a question than what uh, Dr. Ashutosh posed a little while ago. It's, a, it's the mirror of that question. Can a respondent be a woman? Certainly aggrieved woman cannot be a man, right? But uh, a respondent. What about respondent? Because in the entire act uh, uh, and the rules, uh, everywhere the term respondent has been used. So that means a respondent can be a man, a respondent can be a woman, a respondent can be a transgender. A respondent is gender neutral. Respondent can be anybody. So it may be a case that a woman in a particular organization has harassed another woman sexually and then this uh, harassment uh, uh, complaint may be lodged with the internal conflicts committee. Uh, uh, please remember uh, two, three important things. One is uh, that uh, the, the crimes which are covered uh, in this, I mean, I'm uh, using the particular word crime because now it is also covered in criminal act. Uh, well, uh, here uh, one important question is, uh, had there been no uh, sexual harassment act, suppose there was no sexual harassment act, uh, how it would have affected us? I mean, what was the problem? अगर ये एक्ट ही नहीं होता तो क्या प्रॉब्लम था क्या हमारे क्रिमिनल एक्ट इसको कवर नहीं करता है सॉरी आई एम यूजिंग बोथ द लैंग्वेजेस हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश आई बिलीव दैट इट इज वेलकम बाय एवरीबॉडी सपोज एक्ट नहीं होता तो क्या सेक्सुअल हैरेसमेंट नहीं होता सेक्सुअल हैरेसमेंट तो होता भी था और होता है सो सेक्सुअल हैरेसमेंट होने के बाद क्या इस एक्ट के अंदर ही आपको कंप्लेन करना था और किसी एक्ट के अंदर क्या कंप्लेन नहीं कर सकते हैं क्या पोजीशन है सर आई फील बिकॉज़ ऑफिस प्लेसेस और एनी वर्क प्लेस देयर इज देयर आर लॉट्स ऑफ पीपल वर्किंग देयर इज अ हायरार्की देयर इज अ देयर इज अ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट आई मीन देयर आर देयर आर वेरियस थिंग्स देयर आर वेरियस सिलोस so in in case of a workplace you needed to have something where you can go immediately and talk to that is why there is a requirement i mean going to a court one has to think n number of times because it's a it's a court has always been a lengthy process but if something like this is happening at your workplace you would immediately want redress it so you would want somebody to monica call to monica call ma'am so monica call ma'am you were right you were right yeah that that could be one reason, but that is not the reason. Let me clarify it clearly. Uh, well, um, I mean, 2013, uh, everybody knows about passing of this important act, Sexual Harassment Act. But uh, um, another very important act was also passed in 2013. 
and the name of that act is criminal within bracket amendment act 2013 so we normally don't uh, know what is criminal act uh, we normally know by its face uh, known face is the known name is ipc that is what is that ipc you must have heard about that right indian penal code penal code right so in indian penal code there is uh, one a section called section 354 now section 354 was applied when wo- was it applied when uh, rupandewal bajaj you remember rupandewal bajaj long back in 80s was sexually harassed by kps gill you remember that incident do you remember the incident of 80s again yes, uh, yes, many sir. many young persons were not aware yeah uh, but uh, those who have heard about it there was another very important and very very uh, pathetic uh, sorrowful incident that was of uh, pamri devi pamri devi was a sathin who was gang raped and because of that uh, Uh, when when bombay devi went before and it was ultimately the high court of rajasthan uh, they acquitted all the six accused persons scot free they went but ultimately one important thing came in a uh, uh, non government organization by the name vishakha they went to the court again to the high court for a review petition and then it became a famous case very Uh, ill famous though but i am saying famous because of another reason you know the reason uh, vishakha versus state of rajasthan case which was later on shifted to delhi high court and then supreme court so moto came out in 1987 uh, sorry 1997 in the month of august uh, with the vishakha guidelines you must have heard about the vishakha guidelines and yes. because of because of vishakha guidelines you have to have some kind of uh, committee also uh, redressal uh, committee mm-hmm. or uh, sexual harassment redressal committee by that name etc uh well in 1997 itself supreme court requested mm-hmm. government of india directed government of india that you come out with a special act very powerful act that powerful act came only in 2013 why so because in 2012 the uh, one of the most uh, heinous uh, uh, crimes uh, happened in delhi that was nirvaya incident and because of that it was government faced tremendous amount of pressure to uh, expedite that and then they came out with two things one is of course this sexual harassment act and the other one is criminal amendment act and now in criminal amendment act you have 354 354 talks about uh outraging of modesty of women outraging of modesty of women was not enough so now they have 354 a so 354 a uh, uh that's an extension of 354 it talks about the same thing exactly sexual harassment of women at workplace but then the question is if 354 a is there if the criminal act is anyway covering this incidences then why do i need to have this type of an act and uh, we we were trying to answer this in different fashion the answer to this is please 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 remember that there is a big difference between criminal act and civil act now this is a civil act like our um, service rules are civil act okay so when this is a civil act then uh, you do not require to prove with the help of evidences and witnesses beyond any reasonable doubt you need not you need you don't have this uh, uh, onus of proving this uh, uh, without any reasonable doubt establish it with the help of the uh, evidences and witnesses so that means there is there is one one term which is as often used and that is called preponderance of probability if you have heard that 
preponderance of probability means that yes that has a probability yes that would have happened that might have happened so on the basis of that internal competence committee has a quasi judicial uh, power uh, because as internal competence committee you are a quasi judicial body please remember that and you have the power to recommend uh, you know uh, punishment to the employer for this particular respondent had it been a criminal act agar ye criminal act hota to aapko witness pakadna padta evidence dhoonna padta aur unhi witnesses ki aur evidences ki sahayata se court mein aapko establish karna hota jo ma'am bol rahi thi thodi der pehle call madam bol rahi thi thodi der pehle ki bar bar court mein jana in sab chote mote cheezon ke liye to possible nahi hota moreover women related issues as sexual harassment hai nobody wants to go to the court which normally exposes everybody about everything uh, well we will discuss it uh, in a different fashion uh, after a while but uh, uh, yes you were right and uh, as this is a civil act then there is a high uh, chance of applying this preponderance of probability principle of the civil act to pin point somebody yes it may be the case on the basis of what on the basis of kind of you know me too and all those things you have uh, mentioned in the beginning in fact professor rama was mentioning so this type of things are in coming now in thing now and on the basis of those type of things it can be established yes there may be a possibilities and if there is a possibility then internal competence committee has every reason to recommend some kind of punishment or transfer or something against the respondent which was which was otherwise not possible had we been restricting ourselves to to the criminal act provisions only am i clear <coughs> that is the that is the very reason of uh, putting this in civil act uh, very very and uh, the other important thing is well uh, this act uh, under this act the crime i am now using again this word crime although we are not covering it in the criminal thing sexual harassment this is a non cognizable offense it is not a cognizable offense it is a non cognizable offense now what is the difference between cognizable offense and non cognizable offense the lawyers the law faculty members could answer it in various ways but for us internal complaints committee we have to be very clear about it very simple very simple if if there is an incident of sexual harassment there has to be a complaint if there is no complaint internal complaints committee does not have any authority to act upon it so in other words let me tell you internal complaints committee has heard somebody saying that well Uh, some kind of sexual harassment had taken place but you know what the the victim the the survivor uh, is not coming uh, forward to lodge a complaint with the internal uh, complaints committee no that is not sufficient for internal complaints committee to start any investigation then what does it require to do it needs to wait for the complaint and the complaint can be lodged not only by the great woman i have answered it before also to mr ashutosh that that is why if an aggrieved woman does not want to go to the uh, internal competence committee all by herself she can send any of her family members any of her colleagues including male colleagues any of her friends including the friends who are not working in the office etc 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 with some kind of a written a uh, permission that she is allowing that person to lodge a complaint that is one second thing is suppose after the uh, incident happened uh, it was so severe that this um, lady this woman aggrieved woman is hospitalized and she is hospitalized and uh, she is mentally uh, uh, psychologically is not in a proper uh, shape of Uh, thing you know uh, she is uh, uh, mentally not okay then who is was the complaint because for lodging the complaint you have only 90 days of time which can be 
extended to another 90 days as of now. So 90 plus 90, at the most you have 180 days. But suppose this uh, lady has lost her mind and she is under psychiatric treatment, she is lodged in a hospital or otherwise or something, something. Then the treating doctor has the authority to permit somebody else to uh, come and lodge the complaint with the internal complaints committee. And so much so, this act has covered that uh, in case the lady is no more, she has uh, uh, died, unfortunately, then any of her family members can also uh, lodge a complaint. And there, of course, uh, the permission is not possible. So family members next to kin will come to lodge the complaint or they can give permission to anybody else to lodge the complaint. That is a possibility. But there has to be a complaint. And uh, there are, there are uh, in this particular law, uh, there is uh, another uh, uh, very, very effective, I would say, uh, tool, uh, provision uh, of avoiding the false complaint. Because in almost all uh, the places we uh, encounter this question that uh, how come this uh, act provision is not going to be misused by the women who can lodge a complaint against somebody with whom uh, 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 they might not have a good equation or something. And that is why uh, just to take a revenge or something, she is lodging a complaint against a man, say. And the man is uh, saying that, well, uh, this is a false complaint and I have not done anything like that and she is doing it only for a different type of a purpose. Now, this act has given a very, very the particular option for this and it says and under section 14 1 4 it says that if a complaint is uh, found to be a false complaint which does not have any basis and uh, after investigation it is found that so so ICC be very careful it is your duty to see also whether this complaint is a false complaint or not so if you find that this is a false complaint or there is a chance of it to be a false complaint, then you are going to recommend punishment for the women. So what would have been the punishment for the respondent will now be the punishment for the aggrieved woman. I mean, uh, uh, women who is supposed to be aggrieved. So it's, it's the other way around. So please be careful about that. So, well, we, we are not saying, we are not proposing that there will be no uh, misuse. Uh, there could be some some sort of misuse, but if ICC is properly uh, uh, trained and educated about the provisions, then uh, of course any lady member, any woman will think at least twice before lodging a false complaint. Because false complaint pakrajana bahut badi baat nahi hai, it's quite easy. At the same time, Please remember that if one lady fails to provide any kind of, uh, you know, evidence or fails to bring forward any kind of witness to support her complaint, you are going to uh, mark it as a uh, as a false complaint. No, it is not the case. So only recently, uh, uh, in one of the government organizations, there is a live case going on where a casual worker has. Uh, lodged a complaint against a regular employee and uh, then the internal complaints committee has started the investigation and they first went to uh, investigate whether there is a false there could be a reason for false complaint then they found there is absolutely no reason because this uh, respondent and this aggrieved woman they are not at all related uh, in day to day working uh, so there is no reason there is no way this uh, respondent can uh, influence her, you know, promotions or anything else. Uh, or there is no day-to-day -day interaction between them. And then um, they, they later found that this is not the first time that this thing is happening with a lady because of this respondent. In fact, some of the ladies, they came to the ICC and they have requested anonymity, of course. They have said that we are not here to lodge any complaint. We are here to just 
make a report and you take note of this that uh, uh, well this man has uh, done something wrong with us also long back but we did not lodge any complaint we don't want to lodge any complaint either or uh, we don't want you to uh, you know flash our names outside but please be uh, please take a note that this man may be a case of uh, uh, sexual harassment respondent so that is how the internal complaints committee concluded that yes there is a high chance and therefore some uh, action needs to be taken against this respondent I think I stop here for some question, sir. What are the powers of ICC committee in terms of punishment? Okay, uh, Ashutosh ji, again a very good question. Uh, first, please remember that internal complaints committee, the moment it is formed by an order, by an executive order of any words, uh, organization whatsoever, it has the power of a quasi judicial body quasi judicial body means it has the power to summon so it can summon any person or any document whatsoever from within the office or from outside the office and in case anybody any person does not turn up uh, in response to its summon then this quasi judicial body has a power to take help of the law and order authority that means police to to uh, you know uh, uh, bring that person before the internal complex committee so this is this is a very 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 important power one has to remember so uh, the next thing is that what uh, what is the uh, punishment well uh, so far as we are concerned we need not go into the other things much. So far as we are concerned in government, like Delhi University has a service rule, which is applicable to all its employees, right? Isn't it? We have a service rule. Yeah, don't we have a service rule? You have a, and I'm sure that you also have a kind of uh, uh, CCA type of a rule, CCA, CCA, CCA stands for, uh, you know, control, notification and appeal kind of a rule. Uh, uh, you are governed by that. It could be a uh, kind of a conduct rule and uh, your your uh, management is uh, must have notified that rule. Uh, therefore, whatever punishments are prescribed in that set of rules uh, is applicable here because this law says that Wherever there is a service rule prescribed, uh, punishment, etc., will come only from those service rules. But if there is an organization which does not have any service rule, then there are punishments prescribed in this uh, law, in the uh, rules also, which is there. You must be knowing that there is a set of rules uh, which came uh, a while after the enactment of this uh, particular law. Uh, it is called sexual harassment of women at work this the same name goes by the same name uh, prevention prohibition redressal uh, this time not act but rules 2013 and it came uh, into being uh, came into effect on on 10th of december uh, 2013 to be precise and according to that there are certain punishments prescribed there for example some uh, uh, punishment which is pecuniary kind of a uh, punishment so uh, money part and uh, loss of job and all these things are prescribed there uh, this question leads me to another thing uh, often it is uh, asked by the people that uh, uh, it is it is uh, widely known to people that internal competence committee has a power to recommend uh, some kind of uh, financial benefit to uh, the survivor. Uh, suppose there uh, uh, some kind of harassment took place and because of that harassment the lady is not coming, uh, aggrieved woman is not coming to the office and because she is not coming to the office she is losing financially. Then uh, a question is often asked that whether uh, internal conference committee can recommend uh, to the employer 
some kind of uh, you know compensation some monetary compensation etc the answer is yes and that is binding so these recommendations are to be accepted by the employer there is nothing like you know this is only a recommendation and the employer will not accept so again being a quasi judicial body you have a tremendous power but then please 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 remember that this is not a punishment this is only an interim measure so what are the interim measure that you can order internal competence committee what are the interim measure that you can order one you can order financial uh, some kind of compensation relief it is said financial relief two you can order some kind of administrative uh, actions like transfer etc for example you say a um, uh, employer you please transfer the uh, such and such minister so and so who is uh, the respondent right and you can also recommend leave leave uh, of 3 uh, uh, months at the most and this uh, uh, leaves uh, of absence i mean uh, leave of absence is fully paid and this is not to be deducted from any leave account so you can do that and you can do that for anybody for a casual worker uh, your uh, outsourced persons anybody so as a primary uh, respondent you can do it uh, for anybody yeah any any more question please i am uh, getting certain things here um this is a chat one uh participant how to sexually harass the woman totally sorry i cannot get you ma'am properly if you can come again yeah. Yeah. one of the participants how a woman sexually harass the woman and what do you include it Uh, Ashutosh ji, are you there? Hello. Ashutosh ji, can you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can anybody please? Uh, Ma'am, the question there is some problem in your network, I guess. Uh, in my network, no, no, I can hear you properly, Ashutosh ji, but I cannot hear I... Ma'am properly. Well, ask the question. What is the question? The question is how a woman sexually harasses another woman. How a woman, woman sexually harasses another woman? Yeah, and what do you include in this? Okay. Um, first of all, please um, remember that what is how how harassment is defined. Uh, harassment is not defined in this in this law, but harassment is defined in many other. Documents and um, we can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, ma'am. Harassment is lowering of somebody's dignity, right? Lowering of one's dignity. So that that is perhaps the easiest definition of harassment. Secondly, in the act, uh, harassment where harassment is defined. it has been told about any uncomfortable situation so if you feel uncomfortable that is again a kind of harassment now let us come this lowering of dignity or the uncomfortable feeling happens because of any sexual reason then it is sexual harassment sexual reason what is sexual reason every adult person can understand now uh, if it is happening because of a woman it may so happen because earlier uh, we were not that much oriented about the uh, lgbtq issues uh, so now we are we know that there are lesbians there are gays there are bisexuals there are transgender there are trans so uh, it may so happen that a lady is sexually exploiting another lady therefore uh, who somebody is being exploited for obvious reason she is neither feeling comfortable nor feeling dignified and that is why 
she might think that a lady is fully harassing her and then such a complaint so that was the first part of the answer the second part of the question was uh, if if something of that sort happens then how internal complaints committee is going to react yes internal complaints committee is going to investigate find out whether uh, this has been the case uh, before also and find out what happened between these two ask questions and try to find out the facts it is not the it is not the uh, role of the internal complaints committee please remember to to uh, when when you do some uh, question here i mean uh, question answer sessions are happening you are doing the investigation and uh, you are just cross examining or examining one witness or uh, the the respondent or the or the aggrieved woman it is not the role of the internal complaints committee to say what is right what is wrong why have you done this why haven't you done that type of questions no so the questions should be like you know in the in the complaint you always insist uh, this aggrieved woman to be very particular about place and time so suppose she has pointed out that it was uh, 10:30 am in the morning and it was uh, uh, in the uh, cafeteria here of the college so you can investigate you start your investigation you first investigate by questioning people from the cafeteria please tell us whether these two persons were present at the cafeteria 10:30 am or around yes or no if yes please tell us that uh, what because you know that those two people were present what have they been to what have they been up to at what uh, were they doing they were just sipping their tea or coffee or something having something or uh, they were sitting very close or separately they were some kind of distance were maintained and all those things you know uh, you you keep on asking them leading to uh, the factual thing which might have happened <coughs> and from there and also asking questions about this lady against whom the complaint has been lodged whether she is uh, more into you know uh, touching and uh, uh, doing a similar kind of uh, behavior with other women you can also come to that type of a conclusion that yes there is a there could be a preponderance of probability of this type of happening yes yeah yes ma'am have i answered your query Good question so there is one more question Yeah, please, please. If Why? someone is hit for the vested interest, is there any other punishment or act to punish that person? What vested interest, sir? I from Miss Angela. This question is from Angela Singh. If someone misuses this act for the vested interest, is there any other? punishment or act to punish that person who misused the act uh my question is what if someone misused this act for the best interests is there any other punishment or act to punish that person who misused the act for some reason yes there are yes there are so who is going to misuse the person who is going to lodge a complaint who is going to lodge a complaint either the aggrieved woman or somebody else with the written permission of the aggrieved woman so there is always an aggrieved woman so let us concentrate on this that this question this this particular question boils down to if an aggrieved woman misuses this act for vested interest is there any other punishment other punishment means once one thing is this act is prescribing as per the service rule but then again service rule itself says that there are other things for example if you have behaved like that then you can be booked under the you know act uh, the rule provision which is uh, unbecoming of uh, government servant that is rule 3 of the conduct rules and other specific on the rules which is there so it is said that not only because of this act you will be prosecuted 
but also because of the service rule you will be prosecuted and then there is always this uh, criminal act open to the uh, uh, open to open to you so if you are you know uh, lodging a complaint with the criminal act for uh, under say uh, 420 under say 509 under some other things where you are saying that uh, uh, this particular lady has tried to malign my image then yes it is possible quite possible um, well um, another uh, aspect of uh, uh, Anjana Singh ma'am's question could be that uh, uh, could um, you know uh, uh, respondent also misuse uh, by um, implicating somebody else well if the respondent tries to misuse somebody else for example uh, uh, somebody else uh, reputation by saying that uh, malign somebody else reputation by saying that it was not me who actually harassed it was inside a lift all right it was darkness all right but it was not me but it was somebody else who was also there in the lift and this aggrieved woman could not actually recognize who it was let me tell you this was the other man who has sexually harassed her so it was a completely false type of implication which might have been done of vested interest of uh, uh, you know saving one's own skin even then even then this particular uh, man who is who is doing it or a particular respondent who is doing it is going to be prosecuted under the uh, different provisions. One provision is the the service rule provision, and the other provision, as I have told you, they are the criminal act provisions. They are all open to it. Yes, there are uh, punishment provisions. Sir, we have uh, normally we have a lot of outsourcing staff in the offices. So does yeah. ICC take any action against the Outsourcing stuff? Yes. ICC is for everybody. ICC is for everybody whosoever is coming to the workplace. This is a very, very, very important question. Let me answer it clearly. Internal complaints is are workplace specific. Worker specific nahi hai. It is workplace specific. Okay. So, if you are internal complaints committee of the Ansaraj College, then you have to be careful that you are internal complaints committee for everybody who is coming there, either to work or for any other purpose. So, that means it is automatically including the, uh, you know, uh, the casual workers or outsourced workers. Now, there could be one situation that you are Basically, uh, here the terminology which is used is you are the primary employer. Okay, so primary employer means for you and with you she is working. The aggrieved woman is working, but she is not in your role, not in your financial role. Why? Because she is actually employed by some agency who have provided her with this human resource. It's a human resource hiring agency or providing agency kind of thing. Then, yes, they are to be looked into, looked after by the internal complaints committee. But when the investigation is over, the recommendation will go to the employer of that lady or that respondent that this has happened and this is how we are covering it. Okay. Why the lady, why the aggrieved woman? Because there could be a false uh, complaint or something. Why the uh, respondent? So that the the employer of that respondent can you know, take uh, care. So often, often we face this question that what happens if somebody has uh, been uh, sexually harassed in your college campus and the harasser, that means the respondent, is also not working in your college. Suppose he is a vagabond. Suppose he is a, a 
he is a worker of a uh, completely different company. Is a completely different entity. Then what will you do? Because you don't have any service rule which is to be applied to this respondent. Then what will happen? For that, there is section six. Section six, in fact, talks about local complaints committee, and local complaints committee has to be there in every district to be met by the district authority, district officer, district magistrate, and that local complaints committee are to be are, are to investigate into further investigate into it and uh, give them the punishment, uh, etc. Uh, as per the law when your recommendation reaches them okay yes uh, any other question any other question am i audible am i yeah. audible yes ma'am yes, you are audible yes uh, yes uh, any other question uh, ma'am there is an important question in the chat box uh, which asks like what if the complaint is against one of the committee members of ICC? Then the yeah the first thing is that member will be out of the internal complaints committee, and the vacancy will be filled up by other person, and then internal complaints committee is going to start the investigation. Now I have one question for you. Suppose the complaint is against the employer himself i am saying himself because i take it like you know here uh, you know every college has a principal and principal is the chief executive right here it is a she uh, hansraj college principal is dr rama right suppose there is a college and in that college there is a male professor and the complaint is against that professor the principal of the college who is going to look into this complaint? No, no, no. That higher authority or the cabinet committee and all those things are issue now. Those things were there in, uh, uh, you know, sexual harassment committee uh, after the Bishkutaka judgment. Now, the law says it is the very interesting answer. Hear me carefully. It is the district local complaints committee. So, if you have a, a complaint, now uh, I am not saying again by this, I am not suggesting that the respondent has to be always a male member. I am neither suggesting that if the uh, respondent is a woman, uh, she will be of lower rank. I am not suggesting anything. The only law position you remember that if the uh, uh, the complaint is against the employer himself or herself, then it is to be uh, looked into by the local complaints committee. Many of many of my uh, respected participants in many forum immediately asked me the question about this court situation, where uh, some some intern uh, you know lost a complaint against. Uh, the uh, Chief Justice of India and uh, in the Supreme Court of India, of course, the Chief Justice of India is the Supreme and therefore is the employer and uh, why it is not looked into by the by the local conference committee. Well, um, only suffice to say uh, that uh, that that was not a complaint lodged with the internal conference committee. That was a completely different thing. Uh, if I get any chance uh, later on to explain this, along with a Supreme Court lawyer, I'll explain that. So it was not exactly the case with ICC. It was something different and that is why it was treated, handled differently. Suffice it to say. Okay. Uh, for us, the executive, uh, uh, we are working like, you know, I am working in a department in a ministry and uh, right now I am I have been given on loan basis to ISTM uh, so I 
am paid by the ministry, but I work in ISTM in the role of a faculty member. Uh, those things are not important at all in case of internal conference committee. Uh, this thing, wherever I am working or wherever I am going, uh, in connection with uh, whatever job, if I ever uh, happen to uh, be, uh, you know. Uh, uh, accused under uh, this uh, provision of this act, the concerned internal competence committee has to look into it. So the the bottom line, please remember, internal competence committee is wordless specific. It is not person specific. So that is why when one office has various branches, for example, if I talk about the State Bank of India, now State Bank of India might be having over 10,000 different branches, but they have one headquarters. Now, is it sufficient to have one internal competence committee at the headquarters of State Bank of India with respect to all the staff of State Bank of India? The answer is no. In every branch of State Bank of India, be it a rural branch or a uh, urban branch or whatever, if the total number exceeds 10 in that particular branch of all types of workers, then you have to have a competence committee met. Uh, constituted and be in position. Uh, there are other important things, please remember. One is uh, for us, who is the appellate authority? Because it may so happen that uh, I may not be very happy with the findings of the internal conference committee. A. B. I may not be happy with uh, uh, the employer's final uh, outcome. That means whatever punishment has been given or not given, etc., the outcome of the recommendation of the Internal Conference Committee. Where should I go for appeal? The law is very specific about it. It says that whenever there is a service rule, we need to go to the concerned administrative tribunal. So all of us, I mean here, uh, mean for all of us, the uh, tribunal is that. that is administrative tribunal. But uh, when uh, uh, state people are working, if they are going to sack, uh, state administrative tribunal, etc., they can go. Where there is no administrative tribunal, then there are certain other things prescribed. Oh, that is not relevant here, so I am not going to discuss. That is one. Second thing is that if I suggest that because this thing is happening today, uh, uh, how Dr. Rama as uh, the principal of the college is benefited from this particular program which you have organized. Well, you have, might have organized it for a different other reasons, but uh, one very, very important aspect is there in section 19. And section 19 of this act makes it mandatory because the, the English which has been used is with shall, not will. So it says the employer shall organize orientation program and the program for this type of thing, uh, uh, awareness on, on this particular act, not only for the internal conference committee members, but also for each and every employee of the organization. And if she is not abiding by this, then uh, the authority, that is government of India in this case, uh, can punish you, uh, it's a punishable offense and the punishment goes up to rupees 50,000 among other things. So by organizing this, uh, no punishment uh, situation will ever come because this is recorded and you can always keep it in record that this type of orientation program for Hansraj College was organized for each and every any, any other person? Yes, Professor Rama, I am. Thank you, <laughs> I thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. uh, I took the liberty to uh, you know, refer to you. Uh, uh, yes, Doctor. Yeah, uh, please. I I uh, can I add a question? Oh. Sonal Gupta, ma'am, please go ahead. Sonal Gupta, please go ahead. I can hear you. No, I need a Chopra. Uh, can, can I ask okay. the question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, please the go ahead. The question is that we have been. Sir, she's our ICC member, sir. 
Okay. okay. <laughs> My question is that we have, uh, through your dis uh, all the discussion, we find so many privileges and so many benefits being given to the women, uh, like the, the person, the, the girl or the lady. But the accused or the person, the man, do we have any provision for a benefit of doubt to him? Yeah, benefit of doubt. Or, and benefit where can of he doubt appeal, is... If he wants to appeal against the complaint, where can he appeal? Ah, well, um, that's a good question. In fact, uh, when the internal conference committee makes a recommendation to the uh, employer that uh, prima facie we have found that uh, this uh, respondent, uh, supposing he is a mister, uh, mister so and so, prima facie found to be guilty of uh, harassing uh, Miss so and so within the definition of sexual harassment uh, as described in the act uh, and it is recommended that uh, punishment as per the service rules may be awarded to him. It is not everything for the uh, employer and not for us at least. Why it is so? Because uh, as per the act itself, again, the employer have to act upon this recommendation again as per the service rule. And if we are governed by the CCSCC rule or any type of uh, uh, rules in place, I'm not very sure uh, in case of Delhi uh, University. I know that Delhi University Act is there and as per that act provision. Uh, no, no, we have, uh, sir, we have a professional phone ethics. And, yes. Uh, we are having that and uh, that is being circulated among all the teachers as well. So we have a professional code uh, um, for ethics. Okay. Okay, madam. Yeah, that is right. I mean, so uh, not only you have a code of uh, ethics, but also you have a service rule where the uh, ways of uh, you know, uh, conducting inquiry is also uh, provided. So it is not that uh, it is it is not that binding it is not that binding on the employer so uh, to to uh, take the recommendation of the internal compliance committee as it is it is up to the because you know in in this type of rules CCSCC or otherwise a lot of powers have been given to the employer in the capacity of uh, it's very authority. Uh, so you must have uh, heard about uh, appointing authority. Disciplinary authority is nothing but the appointing authority. For example, my uh, appointing authority is uh, the president of India. Therefore, my disciplinary authority is also the president of India. So for me, it, will, it is not to go to president of India for that matter. Any officer in government of India it will not actually go to the president of India. That power is delegated to the concerned cabinet minister. So, for us, practically speaking, it is the cabinet minister who is to look at Now, suppose there is a complaint and uh, the internal competence committee has, on the basis of the complaint, recommended to my employer that this fellow is prima facie guilty and therefore we recommend uh, punishment as per his service rules. My, It is open to my uh, display authority to get that investigate get it uh, by an investigating authority so ia so investigate that investigating authority will be appointed in one of the in one of the um, circulars our department that is department of personal training came out with uh, is a very important circular of 15th july uh, 2015 yes in July 2015, which spells out that uh, internal competence committee might have dual role. The first role is that of a preliminary investigator, which is happening within uh, a period of 90 days. And when the uh, prime office established that the case is there, then there could be a role of uh, investigating authority as per the CCSCC rules to go into the finer aspects of it and then establish. Uh, and, and then this respondent will be given every opportunity to be heard 
because uh, the principle of national justice, PNJ, will be applied to him. And uh, he is going to be uh, given two, three things like uh, audio alternate part time. You might have heard that uh, you have to hear both the parties. So uh, this uh, uh, person, the respondent, will be heard not once but uh, maybe several times and cross examined not by the uh, presenter but also the defense assistant of uh, the, the uh, respondent and uh, then uh, what I mean is there will be several channels available to the respondent to prove his uh, innocence uh, against uh, any, any establishment of guilt. So not that the, the rule is quite uh, you know, tilted towards or skewed towards the women. But uh, when this law was made, it was also taken into account, uh, to be very frank before you, that there are certain statistics which were available before us uh, and, and Ministry of Women and Child Development. That was that 68%, I am sharing some of them with you, that 68% of the women uh, who are sexually harassed in different offices uh, do not actually lodge any complaint. They do not talk about those things. They have confided many uh, survey persons, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, that that this type of things happen to them. But they decided to look over that, uh, overlook that rather, uh, because they thought that uh, if they try to lodge a complaint against this type of things, then unnecessarily more harassment will be there for them. So. It is a case that uh, whatever complaint we see, uh, because it is a old saying in the corridor of women and child development, Shastri Bhavan, that women, uh, it is statistically established that women come for complaint in very, very less number. And that is, their tolerance level is very high. In fact, I have a, a interview of a, a uh, Rupandal Bajaj with me where she says that this tolerant le tolerance level needs to come down to zero, level zero. So women should not tolerate anything which they understand very well that this is something with uh, sexual overtone or sexual connotation. What is what uh, women normally know well. As a man, I may not uh, realize that, I may not comment on that uh, that much. But uh, suffice it to say that uh, the cases uh, that uh, the men are falsely implicated or tried to be implicated and finally implicated uh, is uh, minuscule, very, very less. And so is the number of women who have actually lost a complaint. Both are true. Uh, Mr. Nyal, I think uh, we are close to Thank you. 
encouraging and supporting principal Dr. Rama. Uh, what of the initiative of uh, uh, like uh, why shouldn't I? Why as he yes, sorry, uh, Dr. Rama he uh, motivated me to uh, organize this session. So I am really thankful to you, Dr. Rama. Also on behalf of ICC, I acknowledge the unwavering support of ICC. Thank you, Dr. Mona. But I will definitely be failing in my duty if I do not express my gratitude to the wonderful participants who, who uh, by asking their questions, by interacting with the speaker, have made the session so lively and so informative. Because if you don't have good students, you can't be a good teacher. Also, my acknowledgement goes to my organizing team who is so active, Dr. Nita Chota, Dr. Arvind Jadav, and Mr. Ashutosh Jadav, whose silent efforts ensure conduct of this webinar. I would also like to thank you once again for just making this webinar a great success and give uh, our friends your key certificates. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. I acknowledge your uh, word of thanks. I mean, these are very sweet words for me. Thank you very much. We uh, in IST will keep on uh, answering your query. That is part of our duty. That is one. Second thing is the government of India is coming out with the uh, iBot, that is the interactive government platform. So we are already working on iBot uh, COVID-19, uh, where um, you can have uh, many uh, COVID-related training programs, and uh, your you can encourage your students also to uh, get those uh, get through those training programs and. Uh, uh, get the certificate from Government of India also. That everything is online and uh, very shortly uh, this topic is also going to be there in IGOT platform and then uh, it will be very easy anytime, every time you can uh, get this type of training online and you can pose any question whatsoever. Uh, I'm especially thankful to everybody, especially Dr. Rama who Thank is you, something in time. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. And it was such an enlightening uh, uh, seminar. And we gathered so many information from it. Thank so, you, Dr. Muna. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you.
two to all.